JISC works on a co-design process where we work with the sector to find out what challenges they'd like us to tackle. One of these was learning analytics. Um, what you get in these situations is a fairly broad steer, so um, the sector wanted us to look at learning analytics, um, knew that there'd probably be dashboards somewhere in the space, but it wasn't clear exactly what that should be. So there were two kind of broad areas that we wanted to look at. First was um, what learning analytics could actually do for the sector, and the second was how we tackle it technically. We started by considering the sorts of problems that learning analytics could solve, um, things like retention, um, achievement, differential achievement particularly, um, things like employability and improved learning design. Um, we looked at previous work in this space and found some really good work in the States in particular, plus some in the UK, where learning analytics had been um, used successfully to tackle these sort of problems. So we knew that there was um, something in this and it was worth developing a solution. The next part was then how to do this um, technically. So we looked at various um, previous pieces of work in this space and that gave us a steer towards um, the concept of developing an architecture. So the idea being that we could create um, a set of standards and core services that would allow um, institutions to choose the solutions that they needed um, for vendors to be able to provide different solutions to meet those needs and also to provide a firm base for future work in innovation around analytics, um, research and various other um, activities in the space. One of our core aims was to make it easy for suppliers to enter the UK market, um, so to make it much easier for them to integrate their products once against our architecture rather than having to repeat the integration um, many times with each institution. The consultation process at the start was really to find out what people wanted to achieve rather than how they would, how we would do it technically. Um, so um, we had our core requirements to address things like retention, attainment, um, that each institution um, would have different requirements, would want to tackle it differently. So um, what we did then was start to look at previous work in this space. There were two core pieces of work that we took as inspiration. The first of these was um, the PAR project in the States. So this was a project where a large number of institutions um, essentially pulled their data about students in a standard model and used it to predict um, whether students su would succeed or not. So. Um, this was important to us in that it showed you could actually get a standard model. We couldn't use the model because it was very US centric, but it showed that it was possible. The second then was work um, led by the Aperio Foundation around open learning analytics. And they started to look at what actually the components were in a learning analytics architecture. And importantly for us, they considered um, both the information side and the side around helping students. So not just we have done some analytics and found a student as at, as at risk, but what do you then do? How do you actually support the students? So we used these as the basis of the, of the process and sketched together um, an architecture for how this would um, look in the UK. Um, we took a fairly straightforward process. We kind of drew it in Google Docs and shared it as widely as possible to get feedback. Um, we had a steering group both at a technical and strategic level who looked at what we wanted to do um, and people bought into the model. Um, so from that point on really it was then looking at how we actually um, develop and procure such a thing. Open architecture means that the models and the specifications are published openly. Um, anyone can use them. Um, they're not necessarily pieces of code, they can be descriptions of um, elements of the project. So the idea is that anyone can read these and start building services on top. Um, it so happens that most of the core components are open source as well, but we're very keen that the architecture as a whole is seen as supporting both commercial and open source um, suppliers. So essentially suppliers from any space can read our open specifications for APIs, models, and start plugging in building solutions. 
The core elements are needed to run most of the services. So these are the blue elements in the diagram. Um, beyond that, though, it's up to the institution which services they want to take. So in our early pilots, we have some institutions who just want to look at a student app. We've got others that just want to explore the data. Um, we've got some that actually want to look at multiple um, predictive engines. So it really is quite flexible in terms of the things you can build on top. Um, we also think there are lots of things we've not thought of at all. So these are the items that um, we've got as triple question marks on the system. Um, you'll notice we've got blue and red triple question marks. We think there are things that JISC will come up with um, that nobody's thought of yet. We think also there are lots of things that institutions would want to do. So one of the first um, institutions we worked with, for example, wanted to start building a, a solution to compare um, national student survey data with the learning data. So there's a lot of flexibility to build new services on top of the architecture. Actually, FE and HE institutions are very similar and it's really much more about the um, data analytics maturity of the institution than the type of the institution. We're developing a, a model in this space to, to explain this concept, but really um, we think that there are a core set of analytics competencies that institutions need to have in place before they move on to the next level. So um, they need to first of all um, be able to have ordered data. Um, after that, they need to be able to answer questions around what has happened. Um, typically, these are done quite manually in a lot of institutions, both FE and HE, in the early stages, um, spreadsheets and so on, um, but move on to a more kind of mature automated process. Um, next, once they know what's happening, people can start investigating why is it happening. Um, Again, um, HE tends to be mature in this space, but we've also seen a lot of good work in the FE space around this as well. So this is the ability to look at the data, um, understand what is um, happening and why. The predictive side comes next, and this is um, new space in both markets, and really this is what's going to happen. I think the important thing to understand is that you shouldn't move to that level until you understand what has happening and why. Um, so the concepts really we find are the same in both FE and HE. It's really much more about where the institution is sitting on the general journey for analytics. So there are two um, broad areas that we see um, the architecture evolving. Um, one um, more administrative and one more around research. So on the administrative side, the sector has um, lots of different stats collections, that kind of thing. These are typically done on an annual basis. Um, we're working closely um, via the M5 Alliance with HESA to look at how we can leverage the kind of work we're doing to take a lot of the pain away from these and get this kind of um, data collected much more easily and quickly. Um, the other area is around research and benchmarking. So we've got a lot of data in standard formats. Um, at, a, at a fairly simple level, this means that institutions can start comparing what they're doing at an anonymous aggregate level with other institutions, both in terms of um, what their students are doing, their interventions, all of that sort of thing, pooling um, expertise and getting this kind of thing working better. The next area then is much more around the research into education practice. So in the UK, we'll have a unique um, resource with um, a huge amount of information about students, how they learn, how they work. And we think this can put the UK in a world leading position to develop new educational practices, processes, tools for students and so on.